Hi, my name is Andrew Varga with Razorback Off-Road and today we're going to be doing an install video on the Razor 1000 Expedition Rack. And we just came out with the Generation 2 for this year, so I'll dive right into uh, what you need to do to begin your installation. So when you begin your installation, you're going to want to begin by putting on the mounting brackets for the sides. So you're going to want to remove these two bolts. So you're going to want to start with your side bracket. And this is going to mount right here. So you're going to want to first remove these two bolts. I'm using an impact. You can use a wrench or socket, whatever you have. I'm also using a box wrench on the back side. We provide extra hardware for the lower mounting bracket, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. Okay. So you may, no you may notice that when you take out these bolts, the uh, roll cage will spring a little bit. I like to use an alignment pin. That kind of helps at least get it started so you can put it in there and then you can use alignment pin to move the holes back into place. And at this stage, you want to make sure you just leave them loose because we're going to be putting on some more components and you just want to make sure you leave this loose in this step. So I'll explain these brackets a little bit. Um, if you're wondering to, how to tell which side is which from the left to the right, um, it's based off of this bottom bend right here. So this will actually rest right here on the back of the roll cage like this. If you'll notice this side, it won't fit or it'll point the bracket the other way. So you want the face of this to be at the face of your side right here. So it'll go on just like that. And if you'll notice on this bracket, it's got a full cutaway hole here and it, it has just a closed hole right here. So what you're gonna do on the back is you're only gonna loosen the top and you're gonna take the bottom one completely out. And this does have a cutaway as well, so it will clear any of the aftermarket or market gas shocks in the back. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that. And I'm just taking my two fingers here and just holding. There's some nuts that are on the back side here. And I'm just gonna put my fingers there to hold them so they don't fall into your machine. So you're gonna go ahead and take the bottom one completely out. And you're just gonna loosen the top. Okay. The reason why we did that is so you don't have to deal with all the spring on the uh, roll cages here. So then you're just going to go ahead and slide your bracket in. Okay. And install that bottom bolt. Okay. And on this one, you can go ahead and snug it, snug it down. Okay. And Hold it there, you may need to come back and tighten it later, but try to just make sure that this bottom bracket, this, just make sure that this part is facing, this part right here, this edge, is facing in line with the back tube here, okay? So once you're done with that, next we're gonna move to the top bracket, and I'll show you that. So I'll go ahead and explain the upper brackets here. Um, New for the Generation 2 rack, we've included both the two-seater and the four-seater, and I just kind of wanted to explain the little differences between the two. So the two-seater will be flat, just like how it's shown here, and it'll only have one bend on it. 
the four seater and this is this is not powder coated so uh, bear with me here but I just wanted to kind of show the difference so you guys will know in your kit this will be powder coated black just like this so don't worry but for the four seater bracket you'll notice that it has two bends on here and it has holes on the side so for the four seater bracket what's gonna what the difference is is that the four seater doesn't have this this um, bracket up here, the roll cage comes down and they, they put, have two bolts that go through the tube up here. And that's where this will go. It'll go right through the two bolts on the side going on the down tube right here. So with the two seater model, this will kind of rest right on top of this bracket right here. So that's the difference between the two seat and the four seat. So for this demonstration, I'm gonna move forward with the uh, two seat. So I'll kind of go over the hardware for the upper bracket. Um, in, in the kit, you'll get a little bit longer bolt than are on the sides. These are 70 millimeter in length. So these ones will go up through the upper bracket like so. But before you do that, we've included these two aluminum spacers. So these will be in your kit. And you only need these for the two seat model. So these aluminum spacers go and they go right in between the webbing of this bracket and then this will slide through like so. So then when you actually have your bracket and if to tell which is the left side and the right side, you want this flange right here facing you. So you're gonna go ahead and slide your spacer in there. And you're gonna slide your bolt in through the top and then it's gonna come all the way through and then you're gonna go ahead and put your nylock nut on here. And then there's, there's another hole on the other side and you're gonna do the same thing. So as you can see, you'll slide this in through the webbing right there. This will go through the top like so and all the way through. And then you're gonna grab this and put it on there, okay. You don't want to tighten this down all the way. You want to leave it a little bit loose. That way you have some room to work when you get, when you have to put the side on. So you can snug them down a little bit. And all you're kind of trying to do is just break that nylock, but you want it kind of loose because these do have slots on the top of them so they can be adjusted. Sometimes these cages aren't, aren't, all the same so they vary a little bit but we put enough adjustment in there to account for that so now we're going to go ahead and put on our side so now we'll begin the installation of the side this is what it'll look like and the left side we have the bend pointed and you want the bend pointed towards the machine because this flange right here will match with that flange when we're all done um, you should have six quarter inch bolts and nuts ready in your hand because this part you kind of need to be here the whole time for it. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that there for now. So to begin, what I typically will do is I'll hold, hold the rack here and we're gonna begin using the inner support bracket and we'll mount it to this first. This kind of just helps support the rack. Once you kind of get it started, it makes it a little bit easier and you're gonna put it in through the top holes of this it fits bracket that's on the rack, okay? All right, and like I said, it's nice having the hardware handy. So you can kinda let that sit and grasp in it with your hand. You can now install on the lower bracket. So now you're gonna go ahead and, and install the side to the upper bracket. And that's why we kind of left the top loose a little bit is so that you can work this, work this kind of into place. So we'll go ahead and do that. Do the next one. Okay, 
So once you're done putting all the bolts onto your side, you're gonna grab, you're, you're gonna want a 3 16 um, socket or box wrench, and you're gonna also want a 7 16 So the bolt uses a 3 8 side, and the nut will use a 7 16 size. And just to be clear, you wanna just make sure you tighten just the lower bracket and the upper bracket and then we're gonna go through how to tighten this last. So go ahead and tighten those. I typically will start with the bottom and then I'll do the top last. Okay, um, you're gonna repeat the same exact process for the other side and then we'll move into how you mount your tray after that. So go ahead and do that. So once you have both sides installed, now we're gonna go ahead and install the basket tray. So the basket tray will literally just rest right on top of these internal brackets, like so. Okay. And the trick with when you put on the basket is that you wanna make sure you align the sides with the angle of the basket tray. And you wanna make sure you have about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch gap in between the basket tray and this outer part of the, or the, the tubing right here. So once you have the tray on there, you're gonna grab your hardware. You're gonna use four quarter inch bolts per side, so eight quarter inch bolts total. And you're gonna work on just trying to get the sides lined up with the tubing. And like I said, leave about an eighth of an inch gap there. So once you have your bolts in your tray and you feel comfortable with how it's aligned, how the side is aligned to the side of the tray, you wanna make sure you tighten the back bolts first. That's up on the back side of the tray. You wanna tighten those up first so it'll pull the tray all the way up against that bracket and then you're gonna tighten the ones that are down here on the bottom of the tray. So you're gonna go ahead and do that. Tighten the bottoms. Okay. So once you have all those tightened, you're going to repeat the process for the other side. So once you have all the bolts in place, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check to make sure that I can at least move the tray over. And so, as you can see, as I'm pushing on here, it's gonna kind of self-center the rack for you. And then, like I said, you wanna just make sure that you get it really close to, to aligning with that angle of the tray. And you wanna just make sure there is a little bit of a gap there. Like I said, eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch gap. And then once you have that, that's right where you wanna tighten down the tray to. So once you have all the bolts in place and you're happy with how the rack is aligning, just make sure you go through and, and check all the bolts. And what I mean by that is you wanna make sure you tighten the upper bracket. So tighten the upper bracket first and the lower bracket. 
and anything else that is attached to the rack. So you wanna go through and tighten everything at this point, okay? But I would start with the upper bracket first. That way it'll pull the rack into place nicely. So I'll do the upper bracket first, lower bracket, and then the inner bracket. And that's both the roll cage bolts and the inner bolts here on the side. So once you're done with that, then we're gonna go through on how to install the tailgate. So once you have everything tightened in place, now you're gonna go ahead and begin the installation of the tailgate. And to begin, we're gonna start with, these are the hinge brackets that go on the rack, and they're gonna be mounted underneath on the plate. Don't mount them on the weld side, weld them on the non-welded side. So that way that it's free and that these two brackets will be flush against each other. Okay, so we've got these 516 socket cap screws and you're gonna go ahead and put four of them in and make sure you leave them loose because you wanna be able to make the adjustment at the very end. You wanna be able to adjust your tailgate and that's gonna help with the aligning of your tailgate. So you're gonna go ahead and put the four bolts in there. And like I said, just leave it loose. And you're gonna repeat the same process for the one above it as well. So next you're gonna to wanna to install the tailgate latch plate. And um, as you can see, it's got a rubber bumper right here and it's got um, a tab right here. So the tailgate, the tailgate will slide right into there. And how you align this is that it has this little rubber um, part sticking out there. And you're gonna to wanna to put it right inside that hole and then these two holes will go right on the slots and align itself just like so. These flanges are pointed out, so that's kind of how you align it. And you're gonna wanna use two quarter inch bolts, okay? And then you're gonna put it, put each one right in there, okay? And then when you're done putting this on, you're gonna wanna leave it, leave it pretty loose. Okay. And what I mean by that is you want it not super sloppy, but you want it just to be able to kind of slide back and forth. And that'll help with the adjustment on the tailgate. So once you have that on there, now we're gonna go ahead and move to the tailgate. So now we're gonna talk about some of the things you need to do to the tailgate before you put it on the machine. We provide this T-pin and you can see it's spring-loaded. And this is gonna be installed right on this uh, latch plate here, but before you put it in there, you're gonna to wanna to take some Loctite, some blue Loctite, or red, and you wanna apply a little bit on the threads, okay? And once you have that, you're gonna go ahead and install this onto the tailgate, okay? And once you're done tightening that, now we can go ahead and take this over to install on the, on the rack. When you go to install your tailgate, you're gonna to wanna to have your hardware readily available. So we include the shoulder bolt, two washers, and this flange nylock. And to begin, what I will do is I'll put the receiver plate, and I'll kinda of put this inside of the bracket that we installed previous. And that kinda of helps hold the tailgate in place. And it doesn't matter if you start with the upper or the lower, so the key here is you're gonna to wanna to start with your shoulder bolt, but you're gonna want a washer in between the plates. So you want one washer in between all the plates. So you're gonna put one washer in there and then you're gonna put the other one in there like so, okay? And then you're gonna push the bolt through Okay. Then you're gonna install your, your nut on the bottom here, okay? And then you're gonna do the same process for the upper one.
Okay. You install your, your nut on there. Okay, and then you're gonna go ahead and tighten them down. So once, once you have the bolts installed, you're gonna wanna use a half inch wrench, and then you're gonna wanna use a 3 16 Allen wrench. And then you're gonna go ahead and tighten these all the way down. Okay, so once those are installed, now I'm gonna go through the process on how to properly set your tailgate. So now that you have your tailgate attached to the machine, now this step is pretty important because this is how you're gonna align your tailgate. So you can see we left everything loose, that way we can move it. And this step, what I want you to do is you're gonna align it and you're gonna take a step back and you're just gonna make sure that the tailgate is even with the sides. And once you're happy with, with how, how it looks on your machine, you're gonna go ahead and tighten the inner bracket here. Okay, so once you have that snug, now you're gonna come over to your, the tailgate bracket side, and you're gonna wanna grab your quarter inch Allen wrench and your half inch drive. On here, you're gonna wanna kinda come through and you're gonna wanna snug these down, but not too tight. And I'll explain that in a minute. You're gonna wanna just get them tight enough to where it can kind of hold itself a little bit, but you still can adjust it. That's kind of hard to explain, but you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. So you're gonna kind of come through and tighten these down, snug them just enough to where it could kind of hold itself. Okay, so once you have that step, you're gonna unhook the tailgate and see how it can kind of stand on itself, but I can still push it up, push it up and it'll stay. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you kind of have it sheeted up a little bit and you want it to where when it settles, it'll, it'll naturally settle right in the middle of this bracket. See how, I, uh, how it just kind of naturally settles in there? So now, once you have that in place, you go ahead and tighten these down all the way. Tighten down all these all the way. Okay. And then once you're happy with that, just check to make sure that it seats securely. And you may need to, with the new bracket that we designed on these racks, we have a rubber bumper on here and so that's to help prevent the rattling on the uh, tailgate and so when you push it in if it doesn't go in you just kind of got to give it a nice little push and it'll seat on there and it seats on there very securely so once you have everything tightened down you're just going to go ahead and just make sure that everything shuts securely and everything is good to go and then the last step that you're going to do is you're going to install the gas shock onto the tailgate you're gonna go ahead and open the tailgate and gently rest it. So when you install the gas shock, it's gonna have these security pins on here and you're gonna to wanna to rotate them and then they'll slide right out. 
And you're gonna wanna take both of them out and make sure you don't lose these. So you're gonna do the same thing, you're just going to rotate it and the pin will pop right out like that, okay? So you notice that on the rack, on the tray, you have a pin sticking down right here and you have a pin on your tailgate. So this will literally pop right in, okay? Put the larger end on the tray side and then you're gonna take the pin that you just removed and you're gonna know, install it. And it'll slide right in and then you clip it. Make sure that it's clipped. And then the shorter end on the tailgate side and you clip them in place. Okay. And then once you've had that, go ahead and shut it. Make sure everything works. And there you go. So that completes the installation for the Razor 1000 Expedition Rack. If you have any questions about fitment for your machine, you can visit our website at razorbackoffroad.com. And if you have any questions, please call us. Our phone number is also on our website. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and catch any of the latest updates on there. We'll catch you next time.